Mm. Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, you better enjoy these videos now. Oh, by the way, hold on. Oh, look. Pedicure. Pedicure. I'll show you my back. It's, it's like a baby's ass. <laughs> Who the fuck do you know who's ever had a, uh, a mentally ill episode? <laughs> uh, anyway. Enjoy these while they last. They're only going to be up a little while longer than I'm going to take everything down except one video. Maybe two. Let's do the uh, the JFK resurrecting the dead thing. Let's just knock that out and then I can move on. Um, and get to, as has been suggested to me a number of times, writing. Writing. Mm. I was once told I was a, uh, that I'm a good writer. Actually, I've heard that several times, but... We'll see how I, if I can churn this thing out the right way. Somehow, I think I will have uh, some help. <laughs> this is so great. Anyway, um, let's see. JFK, you know, president, whatever. Uh, great leader, men to the moon, blah, blah, blah. Civil rights stuff. Defended democracy, blah, blah, blah. All right, here's the deal. Two rules, right? are in play here that I know of. I only did minimal research. One, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Okay, we'll come back to that. And then two, uh, thou sh don't, don't commit adultery. All right? <laughs> now, anyone who knows JFK, sort of behind the scenes, read a biography, whatever, seen some documentary, you'll know that he popped Marilyn Monroe. Um, no big deal. But one thing that you may not know is he had an affair, a long-term affair, maybe like one or two years with either an intern, like Bill Clinton style, or maybe like an aide or something like that. But, um, you know, he was intimate with her a number of times and sort of like, you know, just whatever. He was like, she's young, he just like, oh, go in the room, whatever. Like, not very gentlemanly, I don't think, although he's still presidential, so. But uh, anyway, so a week before he um, was in Dallas, his uh, final day, um, he was at some like, you know, not a Ritz Carlton, but like a peninsula in Manhattan or, you know, uh, oh God, like what would it be like an intercontinental or like a plaza sort of St. Regis maybe. Uh, but the point is she came and saw him and, uh, I believe he slept with her and you know, she was interviewed, you know, years later and, uh, she told him, she said, you know, we can't continue this because, right, this adult, ultra, adulterous affair from Kennedy's standpoint. But she's like, we can't continue this because uh, I'm getting married. The so-and-so I was dating, he proposed, and that that's it. He's like, you know, so she's like, we, we can't do this anymore. And he's like, last words to her. He's like, whatever, I understand, blah, 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 but I'll, I'll see you when I get back from Dallas. <laughs> we'll talk about this when I get back from Dallas. Bow. Utility. Kennedy provided utility up to that point. Oh, by the way, he also had sort of, not a, not a death wish, but was just sort of like a Frank Sinatra sort of style. And Frank was quoted one time saying, I'm going to live until I die. Although Frank lived a long time because I think he had a little bit more humility. But um, Kennedy knew in his mind he was sort of dwelling on the fact, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. You know, that reminds me of someone else, the, the Jesus character. Um, you know, he, uh, <laughs> uh, prior to his death, he was like, you know, I'm going to be killed. Thou, there's one God, right? And the second one is, Thou shalt not worship false gods. Well, this also comes into the into play with Jesus. He's the son of God. He wasn't just a man, he was the son of God, right? Wrong. He's just a man. There's only one God. It's the first commandment. Second commandment, Thou shalt not worship false idols. Plus, he's thinking about death, like Kennedy. Wow. Jesus is out. Bobby Kennedy and Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I want to throw them in there. Um, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery or whatever. Both of them did. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he was a womanizer. <laughs> People who had issues, they were like, look, you, uh, you know, you sort of preach one way and then, and by all means, he was providing utility. God kept them around. 
step on your wife one too many times, look at your utility. It makes more, more sense based off your behavior and utility to create a dramatic ending. To break the hearts of millions of African Americans who also worshipped him as, as an idol. Which, right, that doesn't mean that someone who worshipped MLK was not worshipping God in a higher sense. I'm just saying, there's one God, right? That God would have kept uh, MLK Jr. around forever. But, like Bobby Kennedy, who I'll tell you about right now, adulterer. <laughs> Known adulterer. Period. And does that deserve death? No. Are there more things about Bobby Kennedy that I don't know about? Sure. About everyone. Everyone fits into that category. But um, these men were not without sin. Gandhi. I was like, well, Gandhi's got to be. No. Look. <laughs> Here's the thing. When it comes to war, God... God doesn't want people, thou, thou shalt not kill is sort of the idea, right? You know, don't kill. But some people want to initiate wars, right? It's happened throughout the last, whatever, fucking 6,000 years. Look at the ending of their, their lives. Now you may say, well, what about um, FDR? You know, he, he sent American troops into uh, World War II. Aha, but that was an attempt to preserve human lives, you know, to end the Holocaust. Not that we knew about that, but also, you know, to end the war in Europe. No one was, is without sin. If you're God, someone who, you know, is, um, someone who's without sin, who believes in you, admits their faults, you can keep them around forever. This is like your advocate. They're listening to you. But someone starts to doubt your existence. And they've already reached their maximum utility. Think of musicians who die at 27. There's a whole slew of famous musicians dead at 27. Why? Well, you could have kept them around, but they were breaking commandments, right? They were doubting through depression and through whatever, mental illness, you know, so it's like, well, it's better. What did, what did uh, Neil Young say? It's better to burn out than to fade away. <laughs> it's better to, you know, bow, bow, bow. These musicians at 27 than to have them pull an Elvis and fade away. That begs the question, why did Elvis live so long? I don't know. I haven't looked at Elvis yet. But there's some instances. Oh, yeah, with Gandhi. Uh, Gandhi, you know, as it came to war, he was about peaceful protests. You know, he lived until I think he was... 70 or 80 or something like that. But he was encouraging, he was encouraging folks, you know, to go to uh, the front lines. I don't know, some war I've read about it a week and a half ago. I've been meaning to make this video since then. He was encouraging them. This is Gandhi. Bow. Thou shalt not kill, man. You know what I'm saying? Bad stuff's happened to me. Life ending things happen to these men. These are just a few that I've looked at, you know. And I think it's worth saying that, you know, well, what about someone, what about a child who has cancer when he, you know, when he's two years old? Or what about, you know, uh, a high school student who gets, you know, some sort of illness, gets hit by a car or whatever? I don't have the answers. I don't have all the answers. I'm not, I'm not omniscient. I'm just a guy. But I'm sure if we examine these things, we can try, start to understand the one person who is omniscient. So, that's that. So there's the resurrecting the dead thing. That's sort of how it starts. Um, feel free to do some research on your own. Remember, you want to have insight into their thought processes, right? If they're dwelling on death, if they're worried about tomorrow, if they're worried about, you know... <laughs> they're trying to play God, basically. That's when all of a sudden, okay, it comes down to utility.
right now to pull the plug. Period. He wants us to live forever, but we just we, get, we keep getting in our own way. Not because we know we, we just don't know any better. I'm here to help us understand that in a better way. That's it. Simple. I'm gonna start taking these videos down now. I think it's one thing to say, you know, I'm in this mental state that anyone can achieve, but I gotta I gotta prove it up. So I'm gonna continue things like, oh, clean up my <laughs> my life, right? Put some steaks in the freezer <laughs> and show you that this psychological state, which creates a personalized heaven on earth where there's no such thing as war, natural disaster, disease, famine, drought, doubt, death. I'm telling you, if there's a God, we've done it our way, our man-made system for 6,000 years. You know, millions of years if you want to start counting what happened before God chose to introduce himself into the human species via Adam, separately from a, you know, evolved amoeba or whatever. God created this whole thing. But anyway, so the idea is, can one engage, you know, the real world, as I've been doing, but can I engage the real world, you know, rebuild my life and still maintain this psychological state? And I'm telling you, while this camera's not rolling, what I do is I go out into the world, you know, a lot of times I stay with my thoughts because right, I have to be a loner and all that stuff, but I go out into the world and I start to sort of, you know, analyze and organize this sort of approach without getting in people's faces because there are rules. Keep in mind, everything ar around me is a man-made system well, that that system doesn't solve. There's no solution there. No solutions. But within my system, because it's perfect, not because I'm perfect, I'm just a guy who's ordained to figure this out, but he's perfect. It solves every time. And it eliminates all those other things I, all those other things I mentioned. Simple. So... That's it. So there's your resurrecting the dead. I'm going to get to writing now.